Uh, welcome back to Expat Kino Talks with Andrew and Henry. Um, our guest this week is Yarin Blaschke. You'll know him from The Lighthouse, The Witch, The Northman, and most excitingly, the new uh, film Nosferatu that was just wrapped up in Prague. Yeah, thank so, you so much for coming. No problem. Thank you for being and here. Jaren's fine. I'm American, but Jaren, you know, oh, I'm very confusing. I know. Okay, gotcha. I'm not so excited. You know, I did listen to at least two other interviews, and I I could have sworn I heard Jaren, but Yarn. Um, so first of all, uh, you just told us that you've been living in Prague for quite a while. Yeah, two. I mean, yeah, I mean about a year and a half total over the last two years. So uh, I know the town a little bit now. Yeah. So I've lived. I didn't stay put anywhere since uh, 2018, since before we shot the lighthouse. So um, yeah, I guess I live here as much as anywhere else. Although I'm leaving. Finally, this uh, this weekend. Right. I uh, just nerd thing real quick. The uh, the lighthouse. I heard that uh, they built that lighthouse for the set. Yes. And the locals petitioned to keep it, but they couldn't because it was just yeah. Not... It's not structurally sound. I mean, especially that place where you know. I mean, the storms there. Uh... I mean, it was just like scaffolding with like a skin of yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. I thought that was pretty funny, though. I'd want to keep it, too, for I mean, it, you shouldn't have, like, that skin just flying off, you know, every winter, for yeah. sure. So. I would try to keep it, too, though, if I lived there, so. Yeah. You wanted to keep the the witch uh, hovel, huh. too. You know, that was middle of nowhere. Yeah? So. Where was that filmed, actually? That was, uh, where was that? Mattawa, uh, Ontario. With oh, Mattawa. Some national park. You had to drive to set for like an hour and back, you know, each way to set every day. So, wow, yeah, that's cool. I wonder, they probably could keep it if they want. But what could you tell us uh, right now about working on on Nosferatu, if if anything at all? Um, you can ask questions, and then I can tell you whether or not you know. I mean, a lot of it also is just like I don't know when you finish a movie, like what do we just do? You know, like you, yeah, just, yeah. you don't know if what you did was good. You don't know if. Uh, it made sense or it didn't, you know, maybe in prep at some point it did, you know, this is why I like long preps. That's why Rob likes long preps. Cause like you get it all, you're rested. There's no pressure. You don't have hundreds of people yeah. standing around. You can just sort of, you know, work it out with a clear head. And then when you're broken down and, you know, uh, in the gutter later on set, you have the plan you can just <laughs> execute it. And, you know, but yeah, it's all very fresh. I don't know. Do you feel a bit like nervous after you shoot with like how it's going to turn out? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, films are hard to make and, you know, uh, much harder to even make decent. So, yeah. I'll, yeah. And you guys do some pretty unorthodox things as well. Uh, yeah. You, try to take risks. Yeah, you're cited for having yeah. pretty old school aspect ratios and, and all this stuff. Yeah. It's like, go for it. And then, it's like, yeah. you know, I mean, you have enough parents uh, on a movie, you know, producers creative producers uh and otherwise that you know you can if it's really crazy they'll shut you down so right so um yeah my attitude is you know not just to be belligerent but like oh let's if there's something you're curious sure. about or something you want to experiment you know so what about this one side did you implement any old school uh, a little bit technique uh no i mean it's it's really like a painterly i think i could say this uh it's more of a painterly movie mm. you know so um yeah, it's it's kind of a it's it's like a romantic color, hmm. you know, nineteenth century kind of romantic looking, you know, as in like nineteenth century romanticism. You yeah, know, that's sort of the the feeling. You know, it's not it's definitely its own movie. It's not anything like the other two. Okay. So, is, there, is there any like interesting like techniques you did with the camera that um, I know you're particularly proud of, or you didn't? Uh, you uh, done yet? No, we messed around a lot with blocking. You know, we started. To, approach things uh in a less um i don't know conventional way the northman we learned a lot there and you know we're just i'll bet pushing um you know it's a lot more dialogue this time does it work uh with our you know with how we're shooting it we don't know you know i read for the northman and um you guys uh did something a bit different there as well where you had the multicam set up 
Is that, that is that incorrect? Very incorrect. Okay, IMDb trivia. Could not be more wrong. IMDb <laughs> trivia was extremely wrong. Then. I mean, there's like a there's someone grabbing plates and landscapes that you put into other shots, but yeah, that's about a single camera. <laughs> IMDb trivia said you guys had about four cameras for an action scene. No, yeah. and you only filmed <laughs> it. You only filmed it three times. Maybe we had four days for an action scene, single camera, but no. See that? Don't trust IMDb. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that. Well, it's like you know, I'll say something, and maybe I'm not most articulate. I've had no tea. And, uh, you know, and then someone takes that and, you know, gave yeah. a telephone. Well, I had to ask. Whisper. Sure. I had to ask, you know. Yeah. But uh, I did. <laughs> I just, well, even the thought. I feel of... dirty. You even just <laughs> mention of it. Yeah. Well, because they said it. And then yeah. I was like, it didn't, I mean, it didn't sound right. And that's why I wrote it down. Because I was like, I have to ask him if I guess if that was true at all. I'm happy to clarify. Or also that, you know, uh, natural light and all that's like. That firelight is light bulbs. Yeah. Like, that's all. <laughs> like, light bulb. I'll give it a shenanigans. Th- I'll give it a thumbs down on the trivia page. If I, yeah, more important things. Yeah. And do you like the movie? Yes or no? Okay, then. <laughs> well, so with your experience shooting thus far, what what were some of your uh, biggest challenges with this movie? I can't. Again, I can't talk about it too much. You know, okay, we're, we're okay. just pushing the film language. Mm-hmm. Uh, um. You know, it has a more texture, I'll say, visually than um, the Northman. So, was that challenging? No, nah, it's fun. We just test a lot. Yeah, just test a lot. You you go in, you know, confident. You know, so, um, like, you know, when I shot the lighthouse, hadn't shot really anything on film in a long time because it was like probably six years or something. So all the stuff that I had learned, I was like slowly unlearning all through that whole digital phase. Uh, so I, you know, kind of takes your confidence down but i had you know i had to like test like you know this film stock with uh you know this 80 year old lens what brightness level does it flare and you know cause you can't really trust the yeah. video tap and all that so it was just you know the next level for all the applicable things was you know for nosferatu too as well well so i checked out um knock at the cabin okay uh just the other day um well i You'd work. You've been working with Robert for, uh, yeah, a while, almost exclusively. Yeah, um, I have a very specific. It gets more and more specific, you know. Yeah, and things go on. So. And it's great. You guys work, and I mean, I've loved everything you've done. But how was that different working with Shyamalan? Of, of um, that's a. It's it's similar and different, you know. So, he's been around long enough. He doesn't, you know, sweat what he doesn't need to okay. sweat, you know. Or is yeah. So, but he, you know, he still likes to to push things he kind of has like a his own little camp and and set up like he knows like you know the scale of movies he wants to make mm-hmm. or the given budget so it's kind of you know it's gonna make a movie every year and this is how he does it so you kind of have to get in line with that yeah. so he has a lot of uh a vision for the cinematography well he's he's very collaborative like we met uh you know we i was still in prague actually because oh, okay. you know because i came here to shoot nos brought to that then fell apart for the second time and so I was just here, so um, shooting commercials, just trying to stay alive. And then, you know, uh, I hear from him. And then, anyway, I started Zooming. We just had these shot list meetings at different time zones, mm. you know, for whatever, two hours. I noticed a lot of yeah. axis, axis shots. You guys had these really interesting, like, low-angle axis shots. And I don't know, I, I, I yeah. a lot of the stills were yeah, I mean, unique. His stuff, yeah, he, he... yeah, I'm just trying to learn his language, you know, mm. so... Uh, I I had some ideas in there for sure, you know. I just wasn't sure how much because I know with uh, I'm think you and Robert are pretty. You guys work together really well. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if this was all Shyamalan. Like, this is what I want. Um, I mean, I came on. He had, he had been storyboarding for I think a couple months already. So I was involved in maybe the second half of that. So, um, yeah, you talk about stuff and then you do like a second draft of the storyboards. Okay. Um. Yeah. If it had more mise en scene, you know, it was probably more involved. But um, yeah, he, he tends to he would talk about you know, dog toothing a shot. He kind of likes a dog static, thing. you know, like a like an odd composition that just kind of holds. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's kind of this thing. Is that phrase one of the, the Greek from that Greek film Dog Tooth? Yeah, that's where that yeah, comes yeah. from. Yeah, oh, so yeah, he, he really admires that movie. Um, but yeah, that's just learning other people's language, you know. 
Mm-hmm. Except so embedded with Rob, it's sort of like we don't know who's who. And well, yeah, that was the question. Is you know? jumping from Rob, who you've worked with for so long, to someone like Shemalon, and right to trying to find your little. Yeah. You used to have a, like a you know a big voice, and you know he he's certainly there, and it was very um, very inclusive. But yeah, just trying to find your little nook. Yeah, in that, in that summer camp of a Shemalon movie. I did love the film. I thought the guy Dave Batista, he did he did an awesome job in that performance wise. I really enjoyed that. That was a cool one. Um and for uh the lighthouse, you guys had this very boxed in mm. um aspect ratio. And then for the witch, you guys had the looming trees, the lording trees and everything. Yeah. And it was very, very cool. And one three three would have been cool, but you know, think the end of so <laughs> we just shoot the boxes aspect ratio that let us, yeah. you know, so which was one six six. Why is that? Why? What do you want to? Well, it's just like distribution. Huh. Yeah. So, oh, what, like why? Well, yeah, yeah. Right? Creatively, why? Why is this for you? It's just a, uh, I don't know. It's just a natural. I don't know. It just feels good. Just it feels just good. Your brain thinks it sees things in a certain way and it's drawn to it. Yeah, and you know, close ups definitely look better in one three three than mm-hmm. anything else, or you know, one one nine, or you know. Or square even, but um, but I, I usually like I know how to make a wide shot work in a box here ratio too. So I'm like we're covered either way. At least I think I do. You know, <laughs> maybe you disagree. So I don't say so. Yeah, the lighthouse is uh, quite an uncomfortable film. <laughs> like you have to really be in the mood to oh yeah to, like, sure. to watch it. Yeah, really, like I had to kind of watch it in like parts. Um, because yeah, I just wasn't in the mood on your phone. <laughs> no, yeah. no, 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 <laughs> not on my phone. Um. But yeah, and if, I feel like the cinematography really helped uh, make it uncomfortable. <laughs> Good. Yeah, and I can, you know. Maybe you can debunk something else for me that sure. I've read about the lighthouse. We can just make it about, make this about, I've said that. That's fine. Well, I'm, yeah, I guess I, IMDb is like Wikipedia, apparently, and you can just yeah, put whoever, it wherever you want. Yeah, sure. So I read that in the lighthouse, Robert originally wanted uh, some sort of, of, of match cup from the the lighthouse to a match cut of an erect penis because he you know he uh i'm trying to remember that was the intended cut or not i mean there's a there's a montage where like we have this you know dutch head that's supposed to make the you know lighthouse kind of erect itself and that's yeah okay so i guess no i i think that's probably a couple of generations down from i think there was one because there's that crazy montage where he's like masturbating and discovering the the severed head and uh, yeah, yeah. You know, finding the uh, copulating with a mermaid and yeah dancing drunkenly with Willem Dafoe and all that stuff. But I think in there in there I think there was meant to be like an actual like erect penis. But early on they just oh, you can't right do that because they the told him Puritan no. country and we can't show penises. In yeah, the little... he does like farts in the movies. I think it's quite Willem Dafoe's. Big on fart joke. I don't know if it started in that movie, but if you, if you know him, you know he's kind of like a he's he's fun. He's like a twelve year old kid. Yeah. And how is it generally working um, with, with these celebrities or just actors on this status? Is there anything you could I don't know. Ali, I mean, there's a gossip that's worth. You know, I mean, last ride to everyone's lovely. Actually, yeah. yeah, it was like not a small cast, and everyone was yeah. Everyone was great. Even the people I thought would be twats were great. Mm. So, yeah. Cool. Friend of mine, friend of mine was working on a Nosferatu. He played. I'm not sure of his role, uh, but he's also a filmmaker here, and he he was a a guy announcing something to a, to a large outside crowd, and he was talking about just how chaotic everything was, and but I guess if you have a hundred extras or something, it has to feel chaotic. Yeah, that's all. Pretty plain. I mean, the most chaotic he gets with us is like, you know, waiting for the sun to go away. So, well, uh, what back to the lighthouse for a moment? Yeah, sure. Um, shooting the mermaid, the infamous mermaid scene. Yeah. The, what was that? How do you disconnect from that? Like shooting that and preparing that, and then just moving on. Is there a silence on set? You mean like? After the fact, well, it's like it's mostly montaged all the, you know, graphic stuff of yeah. the mermaid, and that was like that was like a, you know, a pretty 
active schedule for us is like 35 days or something, you know, which, um, in the end, but yeah, like that, that mermaid's like, we shoot one shot of her on the beach this day. And then like a week later, because we're on stage, we could control the environment. You know, it's like so cold in Nova Scotia that, you know, you can't just have a topless woman like on the, you know, like out in the elements. So like a lot of those on, on stage I had to make like overcast lighting on stage. And so it was all kind of fragmented all over the place. So. Cause I read about the whole, uh, how they crafted the mermaid genitalia. Yeah. I think it was like based on a shark or something. Yeah. You know? Well, I read about it cause uh, apparently the original mermaid did have two tails. Yeah. Up until the Victorian times. Yeah. And then they changed it to the single. Right. It's less, um, it's less sexualized if you don't see uh, an axis huh. point, you know. That's cool that you guys... Are you involved in the research for the films at all? No. Like this? No, you get a lookbook and it's like, oh, cool, like, this is the new world. Like, you know, it's every time you get a, a lookbook, you know, it's like, yeah. it's cool. And, you know, the lookbook exists before the script. Right. It's just fun. Oh. Okay. You know, so, like, when you get it, you know, kind of, like, how to, how to right. interpret it. I mean, you know, he's, a, he's, he's descriptive in the... Um, uh, in the script, you know, rather descriptive in the script as well. Um, but yeah, we kind of have two things to look forward to. Yeah, that's pretty cool though. So when he, when you guys get the lookbook, you can kind of get yeah, it. it'll have the kind of collar they have on the oil skin, you know, and everything else. It's all, mm-hmm. it's all in there. So cool. yeah, it's very specific. I wanted to ask, like, how did you meet Robert? By the way, oh, he just, uh, I had a. Um, Back in my scrappier days, uh, whatever, I think 18 years ago, no, 2007, whatever that is. Um, yeah, I had a, I just had a, a local agent and, you know, I was on a website I had a reel with like three short films on it. Um, and he, he was actually, he was led there because, uh, someone said, you have to check out this guy's work. Uh, we also had the same agent. It's probably a little higher up on the, the pecking order, but he didn't like it. You know, and then I had a, uh, apparently a, an appealing name, so he mm-hmm. clicked on my thing. Thought you were European. Yeah, he probably thought I pronounced the name Yarin or something, and uh, you know, and then um, apparently he liked it, and I got an email, and it was very earnest, and uh, you know, very professional, dear Mister Blaschke, and all this stuff. <laughs> He's probably disappointed that I was, you know, still in my twenties and all that. I, yeah, I don't think I called you lumping into the tea shop. You know, so, but yeah, we, um, I think we hit it off, you know, so it seems like I, he was, he was just so interesting. I've asked him questions constantly about, you know, he just knew so much. I just wanted to know everything. Yeah. And, uh, I think he, he apparently thought that I was questioning everything, you know, um, like a, like a snob. I mean, I have my snobbier aspects too, so maybe that's why he projected that, but, um, yeah, so he, he it was like after our first short film together. The, which was, which one? Telltale Heart. Telltale Heart, right? You know. And it was also the first period film I ever shot. You know, mm-hmm. it's about, you know, this 21 minute short film, which is long for a short film. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was cool to go back in time. And, uh, you know, because at that point it was just New York white wall apartment movies. Mm. Just talky. Well, especially with a short, you just try to do what's available to you. Sure. Yeah. You had someone going up to this like abandoned, uh, house from 1790 or something in New Hampshire and he was like doing all the sets himself in February in the freezing cold like painting a parking really? floor himself oh my God. yeah like someone who had connections to like a you know I think like a, a a clock dealer had like this grandfather clock that had this unique movement that's like in the film and you know okay. he was, and we you know he built a silicone puppet he had a friend that used to work for Jim Henson so he built a puppet to be the old man in the telltale heart you know uh, cause the guy he wanted to cast who he knew was a local artist definitely would have died. You know, he was like 90 <laughs> years old and, you know, I mean, it was, and we didn't heat it so he could see your breath, you know, and oh he would God. dust everything, which like literally ashes. So, um, he was very, I just, you know, someone who's just as, uh, anal as myself was, um, anyway, that was very appealing. Yeah. yeah. I, I checked out brothers, uh, that you guys did and I had a question about one of the shots. Did you borrow, do, do you borrow shots from the older things you guys have done? 
Because there was a shot in Brothers where he... <laughs> not consciously, but I'm sure. I'm sure um, we have. Well, yeah, I guess the question more specifically... I'd point out the fact. Oh, yeah, I guess I did. You know, well, because yeah, there was a shot where you're following the boy in the forest and you go up to the trees. No, it's, uh, it's like a it's like a QV of the trees, which everyone does. Like, Malik does it every movie, right? Yeah. So then, yeah, then it's like... Uh, I don't know, it just popped in my head, but it probably came from something. You know, well, because I think uh, there was at least yeah, some like shot. I kind of goes down and then it settles. I kind of it's it's nice to mix POV and like objective and subjective and mm. kind of play the audience a little bit that way. It's probably one of the first times I did that. Okay, because I think there was a similar shot in The Witch with Caleb walking through the forest. I don't know. That might just be walking through the forest. Maybe on a. The Witch was incredible to me. I uh, I told you before we'd shoot. I'll, I'll toot your horn a little bit, and I have to. The Witch. I I watched it. And I immediately rewound it, mm. and I watched it back to back. Yeah, and I just thought because well, the witch came out what 2015, 2016. I uh, shot it 2014, nine years ago. Nine years ago, and horrors just weren't done like that. Even ten years ago, horrors sure. were different. Before the Ari Aster style films yeah. and, and the witch, the witch and Hereditary single handedly elevated horror to my in my opinion. And I like horror. I, I I did a horror short myself. I love horror. And I thought the witch single-handedly kind of kicked off a higher form of horror, and I mean that's that's cool to to hear. And you know? <laughs> it was like uh, you know you make these movies assuming we'll go nowhere, right? Oh, no. Like this can be a film forum or you know for like no, I love that. a week or something, and that's it. You know, yeah, to have something be success and you like you get into Sundance that itself is you know, impossible. And you also kicked off Anya Taylor Joy's career with yeah with the witch. You, and now she's doing huge things. She's doing all right. Yeah. She's doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I absolutely love The Witch. I couldn't. Uh, the, I, yeah, I haven't seen it in a while. I'd be, I'd be curious. So far, I heard the goat was the worst possible. Yeah, you don't, you know, you cannot train goats. Don't work with a goat. So, um, I mean, this is why there's so many CG animals in movies, which is a shame, you know. Because how was it working with the goat? You just don't <laughs> work. They, you don't. It's not a working relationship. Mm. You know, you just kind of like, I mean, there are like a, like we don't use Steadicam at all anymore. Like there's not a single, I, I can think I can say, there's not a single Steadicam shot in Osferatu. <laughs> Shots that should be Steadicam, they're just not. We just don't like the look of it. I'd rather have a jiggly, crappy dolly shot than a, that's just our taste. But anyway, no. in the in the witch, yeah, you just kind of like put on the Steadicam and just get what you get, you know. Oh. Which, um, yeah, utterly untrainable. Like everything else has been, Hairs are fine. Obviously, dogs are great. Obviously, yeah. horses are great. Horses, you can if you get a good trainer. It's like, yeah, you can take one one half step sideways, and the horse will oh. land it. You know, depending on who, yeah. you know, who you're working with. And then seagulls are great. Ravens are great. <laughs> uh, well, you know, foxes are fine. But anyway, goats, forget them. Yeah, we we worked with a llama once. Okay, and he's with a yeah, deer. Probably not. Oh, the, the, I mean, they're not as bad as a goat's going to be, but they, sure. they, they're really, they're quite sassy and they just have their own personality. Yeah. And, uh, no, yeah, we had, we had this thing kind of like small, like older Czech man who's the owner and he like drove it down and we got to deal with him. Um, yeah, the music video didn't, didn't even release any of it, but, um, but yeah, the guy just sh showing up with this like huge llama and it was really funny. He just like really couldn't control it. And he was just like basically begging it the whole time to like, please just head on here. Was yeah. this a film llama or just a just a no, guy? It was just, just a guy's llama. llama. And like we 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 decided we just wanted something like really exciting for the for the video, and then we just were like, look, the drawing music video is just like, yeah, yeah, hey, it's like a llama. Yeah, <laughs> we just wanted it to be edgy, and then we just yeah. found this like this one llama farm outside of Prague, and just reached out to the guy and said, hey, can you just like come down for this price and just bring the llama? He's like, yeah, okay, sure, and right, yeah. You didn't tell him it was for a music video? No, we did. Oh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, that part was was communicated. I mean, if I had llamas, I'd be pretty psyched. It was to, good. to be in a music video with them. We were wondering if like the guy was going to like follow through and like actually show up, and he did. And this llama was just sure. Farmers are very dependable, unlike filmmakers, you know. So, no, oh, the uh, off oh, man. But the seagulls, I did read that uh, specifically that no, his seagulls were harmed in the making of this film because in the lighthouse, you guys are. Uh, Pattinson yeah. whips that seagull. I mean, I mean he freeze frame it. That's like the it's not it's the most ridiculous. It's like a rubber chicken. If you don't pause it, it looked great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this all motion blur and it, it looks pretty little grain. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then uh you guys had three actual seagulls. 
that were like the trained ones, and one had one eye, and I don't remember how many had. I know. I think. I think the. I think the one eye, that might be a CG, huh. bad eye. Sorry to burst that bubble. But movie man, you know. I know. I mean, look, you're in, you know, Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, like <laughs> where you get a, a seagull trainer with a one eyed one seagull, eagle. and that's gonna that's trained in the other. Yeah. Now, when we say trained for the seagulls, what do we mean by? It was a little trickier there, but we we got a guy. Um, well, the thing, okay, so the thing is that the the seagulls you can train, the ones that look good, uh-huh. um, you can't like legally train them. You can't so, legally. Yeah, I don't know how much cinematography I can help here, but <laughs> but anyway, but we had to go. We had to like shoot a, some like blue screen stuff, uh-huh. um, like in England later with like the seagull guy, because like uh-huh. the ones in um, that you normally get in North America are they just look like pigeons the way they do train you know so then you, you want like the good yeah those hardy yeah the, the, the hardy big nagy ones yeah yeah you gotta or, that you know. take your shit on the boardwalk you want yeah those pigeons okay like right down your shirt yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah those guys so let's go to a blue screen and get different pigeons so good to do like to the seagull yeah seagull pigeon yeah. to my bat yeah. yeah um and uh was that a bit like more frustrating because you had to like match the lighting Things. Yeah, it's, it's a fun exercise. It's just like you know, <laughs> you're, you're studying your your shot on like double X film, and you're like, okay, it looks like I pro- you know, knowing your own habits, like, oh, I, you know, I probably it was an overcast day, but it looks like we had a little bit of sun breaking through. But I know that I probably put a triple net on camera left, and blah blah blah, and you try to match it. And sometimes the the effects will have their kind of fisheye photos, and you're like matching that. Huh digital photo like on a you know on the stage it sounds very Probably tedious you gotta like bounce it and yeah i'm kind of used to it now but yeah um, i'm sure i was gonna ask like um how was your experience when you were moving up to bigger movies uh as a cinematographer working with all these different departments and having to communicate with them um it's all great i mean you think like language would be a big thing but i did a you know uh one of my best gaffers ever, like hardly spoke English. Like he just, you know, he just like thinks similarly. That's really what you need. Like, you know, I want more than like the hardy blue collar technicians. I just kind of want nerds, you know, to like to, to pro, you know, think of new ways of doing things, you know, sure. and, and to just be into it, you know, mm-hmm. um, you don't always get that. And sometimes you do, and it's, you know, amazing. It's about 50, 50. So, so you really need people with the right mentality. Would you, would you say that? Yeah, it's like you think in a similar in a similar way, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, Northman, we had a lot of people that just really um, had the same, you know, wanted it to be good and different too. You know, my gaffer Seamus was like, you know, taking video and mapping it onto like a light bulb grid so we could have fires that move like a fire. A lot of times you used to get it like bulbs just blinking randomly. It doesn't. That was one of my like flames. Yeah, it's one of my favorite uh, recent movies, the Northman. I, I think I watched it like four times. Oh, but loved it. Went to the cinema right away. Um, North Korea, yeah. cool. Thank you for saying so. I had fun with it. And huh. no, no, you good. For uh, for Nosferatu, um, I love that whole period, the like Victorian stuff. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I'm um, for some reason I, I imagined it black and white before it's even been out. And I think yeah, a lot of people probably do. You know, just because the other movies. Yeah. But yeah. Because there's not even stills out, I don't think. No. Of, like, I mean, it's wrapped like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Yeah. So. I pictured it black and white so earlier when you said color, I was like, oh, shit. I'm sure, yeah. People are, I mean, some people, I'm sure a certain person is disappointed, but it, it's definitely, yeah, it's just, a, it's not, it's, it's, it's a, you know, we try to take the point of view of the people in the movie. So right. you're in the 19th century, you know. Uh, you know, you're looking at, you're not looking at Henry Fox Talbot, you know, oh. you're, you, even if it is 18, like the year, the photo of, you know, right. he was making images. It's like, who, how many people saw that? No, they didn't. They saw paintings if they saw anything, you know? Uh, okay. So well, we're not, we're not approaching it from the 1920s perspective. It's like, this is, you know, we, we're trying to be Victorian. Right. Uh, and um, so it's, yeah, it's lush, you know, I mean. If you go to a wealthy person's home at that time, you know, there's a lot of color in there, actually. Right. Mm. 
you'd be shocked. <laughs> yeah, that actually that'd be a bit yeah. of a shame yeah. to not use it in color. I guess then, if if that's your if that's your mindset, you're trying to like convey that period. Right. Now, you know, the the lighthouse to me doesn't feel like an 1890s movie. It kind of ends up feeling like the, to me the 1930s as opposed to the 1890s, just because that's. I don't know if you really want to see, you know, get an 1890s vibe, you know. I mean, when you're watching The Lighthouse? Yeah. I don't think... I mean, yeah, as far as the period. But I mean, as far as, like, how do you how do you approach it as a, you know, yeah. a filmmaker? And what, what are you what are you channeling as far as, you know, uh, your influences, et cetera? Also, the sub... Like, the, the, the story and everything, I mean, is so otherworldly. It's not natural. It's not normal. So, I guess... Sure. It's, you know, yeah, it's kind of it's a it's it's a mix of things. It's all little. I'm talking as a cinematographer, obviously for the actors, you know, yeah. costume Rob. It's all you know, very much 1890s. But yeah, yeah. Um, I love Robert Pattinson. By the way, I think he's really cool. I think he's one of the. He made, I, yeah, he made love to great, work with him again. Actually. He made a great jump from the Twilight guy. Yeah, to, I mean, we've been working on it for a while. You know, like yeah, it took him a decade to get out of that. I mean, I I postponed watching the Rover forever. Mm. You know because of him you know <laughs> i told him that directly when he <laughs> didn't take to it so well but it was but no but he's he's really great to work with because you think it'd be like you know method or something and yeah and he's, he's out there for sure but like i am that mark and he'll be in it and land that mark you know he's a professional so but the uh i read that uh for the lighthouse there was a lot of rehearsal tons of rehearsal not in normal no well i can have to maybe I read that uh, Willem Dafoe loved the rehearsals because he's a stage guy. Yeah. Normally, but Pattinson was more reserved and wanted to save it for the camera. Yeah. And everything. That actually is accurate. Oh, okay, yeah. good. See that? I'm two for three right now. Yeah. Two for three, though. The, the penis, the... Yeah. Eh, that's good. And uh, what do you want to get into moving on? Like, is there any genre you haven't tapped into yet? or Kind of, you know, I mean... I. I mean, Northland was exhausting, but like you know, I like I I like epics, mm. like a romantic epic, right? You know, I like maybe a little mushy would be wouldn't be so bad. Really? Yeah, maybe. That'd be cool. Maybe like a farewell to arms or something. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. But like, it's also fun traveling through time. You know. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, just the early twentieth century would be fun to so explore. Early twentieth century love epic. Be the. One one of those, or yeah, you, know, you can mix and match those, you know. Okay. So, um, it's it's hard not to bug Rob. Like, oh, what do you, you know, what do you, what do you think you're gonna write next? You know. Oh, really? Anyway, right. Of course, I can't talk about that. Sorry, but yeah, it's like uh, I expect that everyone's yeah, the whole team gets our little circus uh, camp gets excited whenever he, you know. So aside from you, there's other regulars. Yeah, yeah, and working with you guys, yeah. Craig, production designer. You have Linda costumes. You have, you know, even you know, Garrett was the assistant that now is kind of working his way up to producing. You know, um, yeah, it's kind of like a little, a little clan. Oh, that's cool. So you're confident you'll get the call from the next. Well, I mean, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, he's like. By the way, that the shot syntax didn't work in scene sixty four through whatever. You mean. <laughs> and then maybe not. But you know, he's answering my texts today. So we're okay. good. <laughs> yeah. Well. That's cool, because I, I mean, obviously, I think right now Eggers is, uh, and you by proxy, uh, are becoming these guys where everyone's, as soon as th you rap, people are already curious about the next one. Yeah, I did a, um, yeah, he, did, I think during production, he did like three interviews one day, mm -hmm. you know, he had no business doing it, he was probably falling apart physically, but he did, and, you know, I, I did an interview like a few days ago. And you know, I don't know how well it went because I haven't done one in like two years. But mm. the um, yeah, they asked me a lot about Moss Fraud too. I gotta mm. make sure I didn't say too much. So. Yeah, 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 is that tough? What dodging certain questions? I don't know. Or you just have to say off the table. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't get interviewed like uh, the actors are wrong or something. Mm. But yeah, I think yeah, I think I'm not saying too much. Well, well, you guys are definitely, uh, for me at least, uh, I, I keep an eye out on, on what's next. And you guys still seem to be working consistently. You guys aren't taking four-year breaks. Yeah, I mean, between The Witch and The uh, Lighthouse for a little while, but that's because he like, had a few false, uh, false starts there, too, including, uh -huh. you know, Nosferatu. But... Oh, so Nosferatu was originally going to be after The Witch? Yeah. Oh. Well, 
yeah, it was like Nosferatu, too, and then you know, uh, he got a lot of. He was actually writing, you know, this medieval movie that, you know, thank God it didn't happen then. Because like mm. he just didn't have the experience to pull it off, you know. I mean, or or he would just wouldn't have had the control really. Okay, you know. Um, so then after that, it's like, you know what, how about Nosferatu, which obviously I think everyone knows his history with Nosferatu directing it in high school as a play and then taking yep. it as uh, at a local, um, doing a local theater. Um, yeah, so then he finally wrote that and then um, there's interest in that and that just kind of spun its wheels and then for a couple of years and then throughout the lighthouse in a couple of months it was brother when that started to look like it wasn't happening, you know. That one too? And What's that? That one seemed on the rocks as well. What's that? No pun intended. The lighthouse. No, no, no. no I think I think because he had, he had like he was supposed to make Nosferatu with you know the studio and then just wasn't moving or they weren't really agreeing or seeing it the same way. So then he's like, I don't know, this is, I think I'm gonna I got to come up with a backup plan. You know, maybe set up for. Yeah, yeah. It was extra um, independent producer Rodrigo, um, and then. Ended up being a twenty four in Regency, but yeah, yeah. And do you write at all? Do you do you get in on the writing side of things? No, no. Hmm. I'm more of an edit. I'm more of a editor and uh, creator than or a, a, I take away is my is my strength with anything. Okay. If I have any talent, it's 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 reducing. <laughs> so, in what way? So, uh, well, that's what photography is. Mm -hmm. Though you're just you know you're given uh, the world, which is overwhelming, and you're just blocking out what matters and that that's kind of yeah that's why i do photography you know and that's like uh what, what's the essence of the scene and that what's the minimum and i just don't like clutter hmm. in life you know like my yeah. computer as like a folder on the desktop that's it and then it's you know so um yeah i'm just easily distracted you know i've told i have adhd like i didn't need to keep it like in order so reduction is what i'm about so also like when you're designing a scene what's the most direct way to present uh what's going on you know mm. the least amount of clutter or coverage or whatever so i have read that you very guys, cleansing to yeah to, to go through that process for me i've read that you guys uh i don't remember which film but uh someone i don't remember who someone was worried that there wasn't enough coverage on a certain scene and you guys were like beautiful hmm, I mean, there's a meeting early on in the Northland. There's like, because <laughs> you have, you know, all the focus features there. There's like, you know, everyone's kind of excited. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the Lighthouse was successful at Cannes and, you know, at least critically. And everyone's excited to make the movie. And it's like one person in the back, like, really only going to do it like that? And everyone asked me, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 you know, and it was kind of, it was kind of funny. Um, and it was, it was just bonkers to be given, you know, a movie of that scale at that point, just, you know, coming out of indie film, you know, and take the risks and, um. Yeah, uh, it's kind of impossible to think about yeah, coming out of indie. But yeah, I was gonna say I really, really enjoyed the uh, the one take where it goes onto the boat. Like well, that must have been really challenging, right? Yeah, we had an amazing team too. It's like, well, where's the, where you know, where's the handoff? Or you know, I mean, ultimately, it's like, where's the VFX stitch? Huh. So mm. for me, the boat should not leave frame. I will say, <laughs> and it had to leave frame. It's like, <laughs> so that will always have that little. How many little hitch for me? How many takes did that did that take to to get it? Well, it's two different shots. You have one that's yeah. on a crane, of course, and then you you know you pan too late because the boat shouldn't never. But anyway, <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, and you kind of go by the landscape, and it was cloudy enough that you know you got to wait for clouds, so it matches anyway. And Rob hates sun anyway, so you know, wait for cloud no matter what. Um, yeah, and then you have a shot where you pick up on a dolly uh, on you know of course. Uh, mm -hmm. So on, on kind of dance floor on the, on the boat and do the rest. And then it's like, yeah, the rower that had to, once it's out of frame, like get the heck out of frame. And he's not a small guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a big buddy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he had to like fly out of frame, you know, camera gets in front of Alex and then you had to right. time out. But anyway, he's seen the shot. Now you said that the, uh, the studio or, uh, that you guys were shocked to be given such a big film after coming out of the Indies. But again, tooting your horn, you're an Oscar nominated. Oh, uh, um, not when we got the job. So yeah, I got the, you know, I got the, I mean, I think it was, yeah, it was about two months into prep when, so it was, it was 
mm-hmm. it was going, you know, when I found out. So well, it is really cool though. Congratulations. I'm... Yeah, it's pretty how did that pretty feel? Strange. How did that feel? Yeah. Just a couple of years earlier you were doing brothers and then Well, yeah, I mean, whatever. It's it's surreal no matter what. So um just... Yeah, I mean, look, look, there's like someone, like a producer on the light. I was like, you'll be nominated for Academy Award. You know, it's just kind of like, thanks for just being a producer. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm glad. I'm, I'm so grateful to be supported, but really just take it down, you know. Did, did that do anything? Did that, is that how, like, if you're nominated, does that, did, does your email just blow up after that? You get lots of texts from like a lot of other cinematographers that you met for a minute. And it's like, it's very supportive and cool, you know. But I just kind of like been in Rob world, so I don't know if it gets you... I imagine it gets you some work for a minute, you know. Well, how did you get with uh, M Night? How did you, how did that line up? Uh, I shot uh, an episode of his TV show. Um, I think it was the year after the Lighthouse. Mm, okay. I, it, the Lighthouse hadn't come out yet, so. Okay. Um, yeah, you know he liked the witch, and I think it he watches all the, you know, horror movies, and so. Um, yeah, so I shot an episode of of the Servant, just just one episode eight, season one, and. Right. Um, and then I go. He liked he liked what I did. I guess with everything else, yeah, I did like knock at the cabin. That was a fun one. Um, and do you have anything lined up for? I mean, that you can talk about? No, nope. not at all. No, I think it's a lot of road trips this summer. That's too many. A lot of travel. Um, Prague is lovely, but I've been here a long time. It's not my culture. I'm ready to, mm-hmm. you know, feeling a bit homesick. Uh, no, not homesick. Like I'm moving to London, so yeah. but it's like uh, just yeah, just to. I know you live here, but you know for yeah, just uh, little little. I mean, I I'd, I'd like to travel a lot anyway, you know. But yeah. just to I'm in the city for a while. I'm gonna be in the country by doing a movie for a while. I'm gonna like step back or do photography or mm-hmm. something else. Um, yeah, some some time out in cool. the wilderness would be good. And while you were here, did you do any castle hopping? Because I'm obsessed with castles. Because uh, as Americans, we don't have castles. So no, I have gone yeah. to every castle I can, and to the point where my girlfriend is like, "Can we not see this yeah. this castle?" So she starts telling me which ones are worth it and which ones aren't worth it. Sure. And I'm like, "Bullshit! They're all worth it. It's a castle." <laughs> okay, you mean you're what? It's, so, I still eight I, years from like, seven years, seven years, and I still keep finding castles. <laughs> there. Yeah, they. Uh... Love a love a castle in the Czech Republic. They're incredible. I don't know. Did you shoot at the castle, by the way, for Nosferatu? Or no, we shot in. I, I'm. I, I'm not gonna reveal the names. I, you know, uh, the names don't stick. The Czech names don't stick. But uh, somewhere in Moravia, there's. Oh, we're here. We're, we're, yeah, I don't know if I can say. Nah, it's fine. But uh... a really good castle. <laughs> a really good, very vertical castle. The inside's all whitewashed. You can't uh-huh. shoot a moody movie there. Right. Uh, but the outside looks great. I'm Can't sure. really get equipment there, but we barely pulled it off. So okay. our night exterior. I'm sure Casper. I'm sure Casper knows which cast. Yeah, <laughs> you'll deduce. It's fine. Uh, Chris, let me deal. Someone will find out. It's great. By the way, are you in the ASC? Or... No, I had like okay. no. So you had you had you were like nominated uh, for something with with the a- ASC. Or... What's that? But yes, yes, I was. Okay, yeah. okay. I was a bit confused. I thought you were. Yeah, they just. Yeah, they. Uh, I mean, if I was a much better self promoter maybe like i you know i got an email from like some random person i haven't met it seemed like a very sweet person like i'm going to recommend you and oh. then i i think i have like you have to have three letters and that's how the process starts uh, mm-hmm. i think i have two and then maybe we got a third i'm not sure and it's like oh yeah well we'll do this and had her back but do you have any any intention of joining or is it something you normally uh to i mean that's everyone's like look when you're in film school that's your dream is to you know, when it's abstract, that's when you know you've made it. Oh. Right? You get the you get the letters after name, but uh, I just yeah this. I don't know. I don't like. I don't live in LA. Like you know, like, right. like I love the idea of the community, but um, also we can't really go to any events or anything. Moving to LA sounds not fun. I've done it. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. You know, it's it's good for it's perfect for a lot of people. Mm. So. I, I I I did six years, you know. Like being a filmmaker here, uh, and having my third one each bigger than the last. I'm worried that one day I'll have to go to L.A. I don't want to. I've never shot any. Of it. I mean, I was born there. I, you know, that's where my agent is. That's where you know. So you're doing it all remotely. 
Yeah, still. I mean, even when I lived there, I didn't shoot anything there. You know, okay. it's like shooting in Louisiana or Canada or three times. Like, it's, it's well, like you said, the UK. events, the events, and everything. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know how important these things are to yeah to maintain with. Yeah, I don't know. In the twenty first century, but I don't. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, it probably do me a lot of good. But yeah. Well, I mean, I played golf at the right. And at this point, I people. think with the with the Oscar nomination, I think you're good. I don't think you need. Yeah, to look, I, I'll find a way to fuck it up. I'm sure. <laughs> no, so, so. Well, um, do you have any last questions? I think we got to get out of here. Yeah, a few minutes. maybe maybe one last question. Sure, yeah. Um, is there anything you might say to up and coming cinematographers? Um, I don't know any words of wisdom that you found throughout your career. Yeah, which was like because what I would have just wanted to hear is just like. How do I make it? Because you're just like up against this glass door huh. for so long, you know? And I don't know what it is other than just, I mean, it's just so unsatisfying to say what everyone says, which is just persistence. <laughs> like, like I didn't, you know, I think my first speech I was 28 or something, you know? Um, and uh, it wasn't a good one, nor was my second or, you know, a couple after that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I shot The Witch, I think I was like 35 or 36 or something, you know? So, I'm just not smart, and I just had to do this, and I'm just too picky, and, you know, um, so I just stuck around like a moron getting abused, and, you know, that's my story. <laughs> and apparently it works. Yeah, long, long run. Then, like, you know, right meanwhile, half your life's gone by, and it's like, jeez, you know. Mm -hmm. spent in abject poverty but um yeah just being a just a stubborn hmm. idiot you know I mean, like, was my yo, stubborn idiot my yeah <laughs> be, be a stubborn yeah. idiot that's <laughs> it just, just stick around and 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 be yourself no matter what yeah. you know what i mean it's like there's a lot of pressure to be I, I would hear a lot like just make sure you get a eventually like get a dslr get this camera and get that camera and you know this is you got to do something like this it's like i don't want to be a well, first of all, I don't have the money to buy a camera. Mm. Six hundred dollars in my account, but like, how we? Yeah, but uh, just yeah, just do it enough and fail enough to find out who you are. Because you know, if you're trying to be someone else, like they'll just hire that person. Mm. You know, I think there's a I'm sorry, there's, there's a really cool like takeaway from that. And uh, I think when we're a bit younger, there's a bit of this like illusion we have with age and you like have to make it by this oh, totally you just beat yourself up so it's really nice and, and inspiring that you know you can i mean when i was in film school i went to like i was a member of the national board of review for some reason like you know just like a film critics association that just you know everyone's it's like all these you know very sweet eight-year-old people and then like three film students somehow some of them anyway so we had the screening of uh magnolia you know and they're like oh we're so proud of this film and, you know, uh, our director, Paul, made it and he was 28 years old. And I'm like, that's not so young. What are you talking they about? Yeah, I'm like 20, age. like, just, you know, yeah. So their, their point was he did it young. Or, or well, however. for me, that was old. It was like, oh, yeah. Well, well, yeah, that. I guess. You know, when yeah. I was 28, meanwhile. See, I'm 31. So for me, I'm thinking 28. No, you did. Yeah, you had to say Magnolia, 28. Yeah, this whole kid. And, you know, he did two minutes before that. Yeah, but, did, you know, it's another thing. But it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't so impressive when I was 20 because I had the whole, you know, but it's, it's, I don't know, you just like, then you're looking at other people and when they made it, you know, of your generation, if you, you just obsess over stupid shit. They do these, I, I see these uh, inspirational posts from time to time talking about, uh, oh, Morgan Freeman didn't make it until he was like 53. And you're like, I mean, that's nice, but. Right. Hearing it from you obviously is a bit more comforting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, eating black, black beans out of a can, you know, mm -hmm. not, Jesus, yeah, but, because I'm, yeah, but at least, yeah, just try to, I don't know, I guess I just try to take the, yeah, nothing more to say on that, just, uh, I think you said it before, too, without meaning to, is that, um, the, uh, the taking the risks, I think, is, is also, I mean, well, trying to do this is a risk already, sure, if I can, fuck it, and yeah, I, so, so we definitely try to uh so just do it the way you want you know yeah. if you're gonna do what you want just do what you want you know? do some people either connect or not so do yeah. some fun shots and and everything yeah yeah hopefully appropriate shots but yeah but also oh, yeah, hey, I mean, like, what's the what's the um yeah just go out there cool all right well 
Um, I think we'll get you out of here. Okay. And uh, thank you for coming by. This is no problem. Uh, I reached out Just to you. Time. Appreciate it. I reached out to you, really hoping that. Uh, Thanks for being consistent. You know, and so. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do I get up? Do I walk out the door? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not oh, oops. But uh, thank you uh, for listening, and we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back soon. <laughs>